Hello everyone. So today I will be explaining machine learning model for credit card fraud detection. So first off, I'll be importing all the necessary modules. So we need NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn and Matplotlib for visualization. We'll be using logistic regression, SVC, which is support vector classifier, K nearest neighbors, decision tree classifier and random forest classifier. And we need a few metrics as well as train test split. Then I will be importing the data set as df pd.read underscore csv with the name of the file. df.head will show the first five rows of the data set. So this is the first five rows and the data set has 31 columns. And each of it has two classes which is 0 and 1. 0 indicates that it is non-fraudulent and one indicates that it is fraud. Then I will use the dot describe function to generate a descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics include those that summarize the central tendency, dispersion, and the shape of the data set distribution, and it excludes values which is NAN, which is not a number. So we can see that it has also given the quartile ranges, the first quartile, second quartile, and the third quartile. Then I will check if it has any null values. So the data set does not have any null values. Now using the dot columns attribute, I will find the name of all the columns. So there is time and then V1 to V28 columns, uh, the amount and the class. So now I will print the number of fraud cases and the non-fraud cases and I will create a percentage of the amount of it present in the data set. So we can see that 99.83% of the data set comprises of non-frauds and 0.17% are, are cases of fraud. I'll create a count plot for this. So this uh, indicates non-fraud and one in indicates that it is a fraudulent case. So from this, we can understand that the original data set is highly imbalanced. Most of the transactions are non-fraud. And if we use this data set as the base for our predictive model and we analyze it, there would be a lot of errors that would arise. And the algorithm will be overfitting because it will assume that most of the transactions are not fraud. But we need a model that will be capable of assuming both cases equally. And the model should be able to detect patterns that give signs of fraud. So we need to create a subsample for this. So what we do is subsampling. But before that, we will standard scalar it and draw up a scalar it. Robber scalar is less prone to outliners. So it will be able to create a standardization taking in account of the outliners. So the amount and time will be robber scalar. And we'll drop the columns time and amount. Now I'll create a new variable for the scaled amount and the scaled time. And I'll drop the scaled amount and scaled time. And I'll insert them into the data set. So by doing so, the original amount and the original time data series will be eliminated with the scaled amount and the scaled time. So now we'll proceed to random undersampling, which is basically consisting of removal of data in order to have a more balanced data set and avoiding the models to overfit. The first thing we have to do is determine how imbalanced the data set is by using value counts. And we have seen that there are 492 cases of fraudulent. Now, after determining the instances of fraud transactions and non-fraud transactions, it, it is our aim to create a 50 by 50 ratios. That is equal number of fraud and non-fraudulent, which is 492 cases. Now, after implementing this technique, we have a subsample of a data frame with a 50 by 50 ratio with regards to our classes. Then the next step that we will implement is shuffle the data to see if our models can maintain a certain accuracy every time we run the script. So the main issue with random undersampling is that we have the risk 
that our classification models will not perform as accurate as we would like to since there's a great loss of information loss because we are limiting the data set of non fraud transaction to 492 and initially there were around 280,000 non fraud transactions now since the classes are highly skewed we should make them equivalent in order to have a normal distribution of the classes and by doing this uh, step we will be shuffling the data before creating the subsamples. Now we have created a new data frame uh, and now it e contains equal amount of both the classes. Now this is the count plot and we can see that there are equal number for both the classes. I'll create a new variable x for the data frame that contains all the columns except the column class and y will contain uh, the column class. Now I will split the new data frame into testing and training uh, with the test size being 20%. I will also create an array for the training values, the testing values and the target variable for both the training and the testing data set. This creates a dictionary called classifiers with the key being the name of the algorithm that's used and the value being the functions. So we will be using logistic regression, k neighbors classifier, support vector classifier and decision tree classifier. Now I will find the cross validation score. So this dictionary will be used to fit the classifier to the training data set uh, and the target variable of the training data set. And I will generate the cross validation score to find which model has a better accuracy. So for logistic regression, the training score is 93%, same with K neighbors. SVC has 93% and decision tree classifier has 90%. Now I will generate the cross validation uh, score Cross validation is running the model with a part of the data set to check the accuracy. So after running this, we can see that logistic regression has a cross validation score of 93.14, K neighbors with 92%, support vector classifier with 92%, and decision tree with 90.2%. Now I will use the cross validated model for predicting the target variable of the training data set and and generate the ROC AUC score. So ROC AUC curve is a performance measurement for classification problem at various threshold settings. ROC is a probability curve and AUC represents degree or measure of the separability. So what it does, it tells us how much a model is capable of distinguishing between the two classes. So if the AUC is higher, then the model is better at predicting the zero as zero and one as one. So it is capable of predicting and distinguishing between the two classes. So I'll be using a CV as five and the ROC AUC score for the four different models are given and we can see that support vector classifier as has the highest score. So now I'll explain a bit about support vector classifier. The objective of the support vector machine algorithm is to find a hyperplane in an n dimension space and n is the number of features in the data set and that distinguishly classifies the data points. So we can see uh, that these are the various points and this belongs to one particular class and this belongs to the second class. So the objective is to find a plane that has maximum margin. So here we can see that the margin is of this length, but here there is a greater margin. So the objective is to find a greater margin that is the maximum distance between the data points of both the classes. So this is a better SVM classifier than this. So using this high score in support vector classifier, we will use this model in order to classify between fraudulent and non-fraudulent credit card transactions.